For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top four, BYU two, Pacific no score. First batter here in the fourth, James Arakawa. The shortstop grounds out to his positional counterpart, Brock Watkins, and the 6-3 ground out. Gives the Tigers one out here in the top of the fourth. Each team has at least one hit in every inning so far. Tigers no runs on three hits. They've scattered their three hits, one in each inning. BYU two runs on six hits. One gone here in the top of the fourth for Thomas Govello. After a 6-3 ground out by Arakawa, Discount Tire presents on the rubber a look at both teams' pitching numbers. Pacific through three. Hunter Hayes giving up six hits, two runs, both earned. Two strikeouts, no walks, two wild pitches, and a hit batsman. As Roby kicks and fires on the 1-0. A swing and a miss for strike one. One and one the count. BYU pitching. Bryce Robinson through three and now a third. Three hits, no runs. Has struck out three, no walks, no wild pitches, no hit batsman. That's the 40th pitch just thrown from Roby. Missing outside for ball two. Two and one. That was on the rubber. Brought to you by Discount Tire. Discount Tire, let's get you taken care of. Cougars taking care of the Tigers for the time being. Two nothing. The two one. Low for ball three. Three balls and a strike to Thomas Gavello. Gavello with a double in the second. He was pushed over to third on a sack bunt and then stranded there after back-to-back strikeouts by Roby. Roby catches outside edge on a 3-1 count to fill the count three and two with one out and no one on here in the top of the fourth inning. Shadows inching across the infield. And that'll be a strikeout of Thomas Gavello. And the fourth of the day for Bryce Robinson. And two gone for the Tigers here in the top of the fourth. So Gavello striking out looking. And two gone for the Tigers. Chaz Myers now batting. And takes strike one. Fastball in an 89 from Roby. Myers sacrifice bunt in the second, so 0 for 0 officially tonight. High for ball one. Shadows in case both the pitcher's mound and the batter's circle now. But the infielders remain in the sunshine. As for the entire outfield, the same. 1-1. Off speed, fouled back for one ball and two strikes. So Bryce Robinson now with his fourth strikeout. Two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth. And has yet to issue a base on balls. That'll be a one hopper to Watkins, waits for it, handles it on the green grass area, and fires to Rogers at first. And a second 6-3 ground out here in the fourth inning. So for the Tigers, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on. We go bottom four, Cougars two, Tigers no score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Jacob Rogers leads off BYU's fourth. We're in the bottom of the fourth of a two-run ball game. BYU's up 2-0. Hunter Hayes on the 93-mile-per-hour heater. Sees it fouled back by Rogers out of play. 0-1 to Jacob. Jacob grounded out 6-3 to end the first inning. A two-run first for BYU. The lead's held up so far. That's a wave and an off-speed offering. Jacob out in front. No balls and two strikes as Hayes gets ahead of Jacob. Jacob Rogers making his seventh start of the season at first base. Taking Jacob Wilkes' spot on the field. The 0-2 to Rogers. And it's a backward K. He knew it. He turns and heads to the dugout after a caught looking to open the bottom of the fourth. So Hunter Hayes kind of struggled through the first in which he gave up two. He had no strikeouts in that inning. And since has strikeouts in every inning since. The uh, second inning, third, and fourth innings, each with a single K for Hunter Hayes. Empty count, one out, no one on for Colin Reuter. Reuter has struck out four times in the series. Reuter one for five. And all four of his uh, outs are via strikeout. So one for five with a run scored and a base on balls for Reuter. BYU's catcher takes 1-0. Swings and misses for one and one. A lot of strikeouts in the back third of the order last night. 
Jacob Wilk in the seven hole struck out five times. Cowden in the eight hole struck out three times. And Reuter in the nine hole struck out three times. The 1-1. One, one. Outside and outside edge caught. So now Collins behind one ball, two strikes, 94 mile per hour fastball from Hayes with a paint job and a little generous on the strike zone. Was uh, Scott Jones there for one, two. Missing for ball two, two and two the count even. Missing inside was Hayes. St. Mary's in Portland played early today due to impending weather. Pilots leading 8-6 over the Gales, top of the eighth, the 2-2. And Collin takes away for ball three. Count is full with one out and no one on. Here at the bottom of the fourth, BYU 2 and Pacific no score. St. Mary's with a loss would be all but mathematically elim eliminated from conference tournament contention. Pacific is already eliminated mathematically. The 3-2. And a swing and a miss, and Reuter has struck out for a fifth time in six at-bats in this series. And the first two batters for BYU here in the fourth arcade. Rogers looking and Reuter swinging. So Colin now one for six with five strikeouts in this series. Dawson Hall singled. And then was erased on the base paths on a 6-4 fielder's choice ground out by Ozzie Pratt. And Dawson is down 0-1 on the take. Two gone here in the bottom of the fourth. Last night's game, four hours and 33 minutes. Tonight's game is not yet an hour old. And we're almost through four complete. Grounder to first base. Weiss will handle himself. Step to the bag ahead of Dawson Hall. And BYU goes down in order in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. We go to the top of the fifth, almost halfway home here in Provo. 2 nothing. Cougs lead the Tigers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU baseball here at Larry H. Miller Field. Cougars leading Pacific by a score of 2 nothing. Top five. Women's so the softball team is boat racing St. Mary's behind us. 15 nothing after four. Bryce Robison facing Brandon Motherall to open the fifth inning. And Motherall, who struck out swinging in the second. Fouls an 89-mile-per-hour fastball out of play for strike one to Bryce against Bryce Robison. Roby kicks and fires. That's popped up to center field. Late break on it from Hall. Hall ranging to his right and makes the catch in left center for out number one. Dawson Hall starting in place of the banged-up Mitch McIntyre. McIntyre scored the game-winning run last night at the bottom of the 12th and then showed up for work today, didn't feel right, and so he's out of the lineup, and that is a rarity. He and Brock Watkins were the only two guys to start every game this season. Now Brock Watkins is the only player to start every game. All 48 for BYU. His foul tipping is Jacob Weiss for strike one. One out, no one on. Ba, top five. BYU 2, Pacific no score. Swing and a miss from Weiss, and he's down 0-2 to Bryce Robison. Two teams streaking in opposite directions. BYU's won seven in a row. Coming into tonight, the Tigers have lost four in a row and are four, have lost 14 of the last 17. And a swinging strikeout as Weiss is caught waving and two gone for the Tigers here in the top of the fifth. And for Bryce Robison, strikeout number five on the night. All Pacific can do right now is play spoiler. They cannot play in the conference tournament. Not enough games left. Nor enough wins possible for the visitors from Stockton. Two out for Jaron Silva. Silva takes ball one. Silva struck out looking in the third. BYU Pacific, one of four WCC series being contested tonight. The Cougars, of course, and Tigers opened last night. The other series all open tonight, fouled by Silver for one and one. The other series are St. Mary's at Portland. And that game, again, is getting late up at Joe Edsel Field. Santa Clara at Gonzaga and Pepperdine at LMU. The 1-1. One, one. And that'll be a base hit. Rolling to right center, being cut off by Dawson Hall. He'll get it in, holding Silva to a single base. So it's two-out single for Pacific here in the top of the fifth, bringing up the number nine hitter, James McLennigan. McLennigan singled in the third. 
top of the order on deck in Ben Nemevant. Will they get to him in this inning? Two gone here in the top of the fifth. Almost halfway done here at Larry H. Miller Field. BYU 2, Pacific no score. Tigers are the WCC Cellar Dwellers at 5-17 and 17 in league. BYU solo fifth at 12-10 and 10 and pacing for the conference tournament in Stockton. Roby throwing over. Checking Silva. Back clean. Empty count. Two out, one on. Tying run coming to the plate. As Reuter handles a strike one, then pops out of his crouch. Getting back to first was Silva. As Reuter was looking his way. McLennigan. One for one tonight. Two for four in the series. With a runner on first. Roby throws over. Closer that time. And hurting his hand on the dive back in was Silva. Comes up shaking it. Waves the trainer off. He'll be okay, he says. No balls, a strike. Two out, one on. Top five in a two-nothing ball game. Cougs on top. Bryce Robinson's gone all the way. We'll throw back over. Roby four of BYU's ten pickoffs on the year. A swing and a miss from McLennigan for 0-2. BYU with a stellar 18-3 record when leading into the fifth inning, as BYU is here tonight. No balls, two strikes, two out, one on. Bryce Robinson in command. Throws low. Could afford to waste a pitch there. One ball, two strikes. Bryce Robinson coming in two tonight, a whip of 1.31. A strikeout to walk ratio of nearly three. High pitch count on the year is 86. And Bryce is about to throw his 59th pitch of the night. He's in the fifth inning of work. Silva takes a leadoff first, two out single for Silva. McLennigan down on the count one and two. Roby comes plateward. And that's low and away for ball two. Making the block was Reuter. Roby's hit to walk a batter or throw a wild pitch or hit a batter. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled back to the screen. Count stays even at two and two. Pacific playing its 15th night game of the year. 3-11 and 11 in the previous nighttime affairs. In the last three WCC series they've played have all ended up in sweeps. Two against and one for the 2-2. Two, two. two out, one on. And that'll be a base hit. Into right center. Rounding second and sliding into third is Silva as McLennigan ends up at first base. Another two-out single, and Silva goes first to third on the single on the ground to right center. Ozzie Pratt took a step or two to his right, but it was past Pratt and into the outfield. So back-to-back two-out singles put runners on the corners for Ben Nemevant. Tying run at first base. Go ahead, run at the plate. Nemevan tonight, one for two. Let off the game with a single. He was stranded. Actually, was raced on a 5 4 3 DP. Two out, two on for the Tigers. Roby gets an outside edge. Off speed at 80 for no balls and a strike. On third is Silva. On first is McLennigan. McLennigan, two for two tonight. And three for five in the series now. A throw over by Roby. McLennigan back safely. Jaron Silva is 90 feet away from scoring the Tigers' first run. It's BYU 2. The Tigers no score. Top five here at Miller Park. 0-1 to Nemevant. It's low and away. 
one and one. Almost the entire infield is shadowed up now. Deming is in shadow. Watkins is in sunshine. Pratt is in sunshine. And Rogers is in shadow. So shadows on the corners. And shadows from mound to plate as nightfall approaches here along the Wasatch front. Low for ball two. Two and one from Roby. Tigers have lost four in a row coming into tonight. Their season-long losing skid, 10 games. We note that BYU's not lost even three in a row at any point this season. Their longest losing skid, if you want to call it that, has been two games on a few occasions. Grounder to second. Pratt will go to Watkins at second for one to end the inning. That'll do it. So it is a 4-6 ground out. And the Tigers will leave two. For the Tigers in the fifth, no runs on two hits. No errors and two left on. We go bottom five. We're halfway home at Miller Park. It is BYU 2 and Pacific No Score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning, Ozzie Pratt, the left-handed bat, takes Hutter Hayes' yard to the right field wall and over Ozzie Pratt. Home run number two on the year, and the Cougs increase their lead from two to three nothing here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The leadoff batter, Ozzie Pratt, yard work to right, and the Cougs go up three zip. Brock Watkins will now step in with the bases empty. And the Cougs now up 3-0 on seven hits. Pacific no runs on five hits. And the Cougs have their first home run of this series, second of the year for Ozzie Pratt. RBI number 14 for the Cougars' second baseman. BYU's record when hitting a home run this year, 17-10. As Brock takes 0-1, turns into 1-1. Just as we came back from break, that ball was in the air. A first pitch drive to right field. And the solo home run for Pratt. Brock fouls back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. And for Hunter Hayes, that's the eighth home run allowed. That ties for the highest number on the Pacific staff. The 1 2 hits the dirt inside and low for ball two. Two and two. So, as was the case last night, BYU takes a 3 0 lead over Pacific. Last night, the 3 0 lead came in the first. Tonight, the 3 0 lead comes in the fifth. Opposite field grounder to first baseman Jacob Weiss. He'll handle himself, step on the bag, and one gone for BYU here in the bottom of the fifth. We're on the downhill side of this game. Again, the Cougs now lead by a score of 3 0. So Brock Watkins retired on the unassisted ground out to the first baseman. Cole Gamble, who singled and scored in the first, he bats now in the fifth. And Cole will drop a base hit into right field. A one hopper to the right fielder. Such an easy swing for Gamble, who's now two for three on the night. A pair of singles in the first and now the fifth. He flew out to left in the second. So a two for three night for Gamble. And a three for eight series for Cole. So one out single to right for Gamble, bringing up Ryan Sapiti. Sapiti singled home a run in the first. And then singled in the third. So two for two tonight and three for set, uh, two, three for six in the series for Sapiti. One out, one on for Ryan. Low from Hayes for ball one. And after a busy night for both pens last night, no one up in the Pacific bullpen right now. As that ball is... Spike to Lee. Spike Lee. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Ryan Sapiti. Two for two tonight, pair of singles. And a reach base streak now, 12 games and counting, 2-0. and Gamble leads it first. It's away for ball two, 2-0 two to Sapiti. Ryan Sapiti out of Vegas, the Bishop Gorman High School product. 
Six foot, 205 pound junior right fielder. Since Cole Gamble's gotten injured, Cole, Cole's now on first, DHing. And that's a four pitch walk to Sapiti. So Gamble will advance to second, Sapiti on first, and Austin Deming will now hit with two on and one out in a three nothing ball game. And for Hunter Hayes, that's walk number one. That's the first base on balls issued by either team tonight. Comes in the bottom of the fifth. Still waiting to see a pitcher pop up in the Pacific pen. Hasn't happened yet. BYU three runs on eight hits. Both teams used six pitchers last night. As that pitch is high and away for ball one to Austin Deming. Cole Gamble on second, Ryan Sapiti on first. Two on, one out, and a mound visit. Head coach Chris Rodriguez will make the walk out. Rodriguez in his third season as the Tigers skipper. His team picked to finish 10th in the WCC preseason poll. They finished 10th last year. And they're 10th right now. Solo 10th. As now we see action in the Pacific pen. First pitcher up is Duke. Caden Duke, the right-hander, starts to warm. As Chris Rodriguez has ended his mound conversation. So Caden Duke takes his first warm-up tosses in the Pacific pen. And the BYU bullpen is vacant as the Cougs lead 3-0 with Bryce Robinson on the hill. Austin Deming takes a second consecutive ball. Hayes has just issued his first base on balls after giving up an eighth hit on the night. He's also hit a batter. 2-0 to Deming. And that'll be an opposite field slice to right field. Sharp enough that Gamble will hold at third. Base is loaded now and one out. So a single by Gamble, a base on balls to Sapiti, and a single by Deming stacks the sacks for Josh Cowden. And that's hit number nine for BYU. As Duke's urgency in the pen increases, Gamble stays at third. Sapiti goes to second. Bases loaded for BYU. The Cougs in bases loaded situations get their first at bat officially in that situation tonight. And that will be a single through the right side by Josh Cowden. Gamble will score. Sapiti coming around and he will head for a slide in for runs number four and five. Gamble and Sapiti score. And five nothing Cougs. It's a three run fifth and a two run single for Josh Cowden. Gamble scoring from third. Sapiti around from second. Stopping at second is Deming and Josh Cowden with two RBI on the single through the 3-4 hole. It'll bring up Jacob Rogers with still one out. Cougs up 5-0. And Rogers gives it a ride to left. Back into the wall goes Nevevant and makes the catch on the track. And the runners will retreat. Nemovant speedily to the warning track to make that catch. And record out number two. Rogers got a hold of it, but a great break by Nemovant and makes the catch on the warning track in deep left field. Two gone for BYU here in the bottom of the fifth. A crooked number fifth after a crooked number first for BYU. Two in the first, three in the fifth, five nothing Cougs, five runs on 10 hits as Duke continues to get warm in the Pacific pen. And ball one delivered to Colin Reuter, who's now one for six in the series with five strikeouts. And a strikeout swinging in the second and fourth innings tonight. 1-0 to Colin. Two on for BYU. Two out for BYU. Deming on second. Cowden on first. Cowden driving in Gamble and Sapiti after Ozzy Pratt led off the inning with a solo shot to right field. 
We're almost through five, and BYU with a five run lead, five nothing. Two balls, no strikes to Reuter. Take strike one. Fastball at 92 around the kneecaps. BYU will lead through five. And when the Cougs lead through five this year, their record is an outstanding 19 and three. Two balls, one strike, two out, two on, five zip, bottom five. And that'll be a swing and a miss for Reuter for strike number two. Hunter Hayes bending at the waist. Now comes set from the stretch. The 2-2 two -two to Reuter. The wind and deal and hit him on the hip. So the bases will load once again as Colin Reuter takes an HBP to first base. And Caden Duke is almost ready to go in the Pacific bullpen as Hunter Hayes' problems multiply, and that will be it for Hayes. We'll take a 60-second break and a pitching change for the Tigers. It's BYU 5, Pacific no score. Hunter Hayes' night is done. We'll come back with a new Tigers pitcher in a minute on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. New pitcher for Pacific in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Cougs have chased starter Hunter Hayes with five runs on ten hits, three of which have scored here in the bottom of the fifth. An Ozzie Pratt solo home run and a two-run single from Josh Cowden in an inning that has featured three hits, four hits so far for BYU. That home run, and then singles from Gamble, Deming, and Cowden. There's also been a hit by pitch and a base on balls. All factors leading to Hunter Hayes' demise. He leaves the game, replaced by Caden Duke. The six foot three, 220 pound freshman from Tracy, California, Duke. The right hander making his 16th appearance of the year. He has one start on his resume, a 6.35 ERA, an 0 on one record. 17 innings in 15 appearances. Has given up 15 hits in those 17 innings, 12 runs, all of them earned, and has more walks than strikeouts, which you don't always see. 15 free passes to 10 Ks. And batter sitting 238 against him. The right-hander Duke will face the left-handed hitting Dawson Hall, the nine-hole hitter, with two out and the bases loaded. Coming in tight on Hall for ball one is Duke. Austin Deming on third, Josh Cowden on second, and Colin Reuter on first. Again inside, two straight balls from Duke in his first two pitches thrown. BYU coming in two tonight, hitting 341 with the sacks stacked. And the Cougs are one for one in that situation tonight. Up around 350, the number of climbs. And three straight balls out of the pen from Caden Duke. The specific pitching staff really struggles. A 6.98 team ERA and an opposing batting average of 285. Three balls, no strikes. You figure Dawson will be on the take, and he is, and takes a strike one on the outside edge, and a little too far outside based on the track man data. Three balls and a strike regardless. Three and one to the center fielder Hall. And Dawson lifts that into center field. Center fielder McClendigan shading his eyes and makes the catch just shy of the warning track. For out number three, Cougs leave. The base is loaded. So for the Cougs in the bottom of the fifth, three runs on four hits. There were no errors, and three were left on. We go to the top of the sixth. BYU 5, Pacific no score on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Jeremy Lee leads off the Pacific sixth inning. Cougar bullpen now gets active as Roby gets into his sixth inning of work. Bryce Robinson kicks and fires and gets called for a strike at 87 miles per hour. Fastball settling in for strike one, and that's a 
Pitch low and uh, way outside for ball one. One and one from Roby to Jeremy Lee. Lee coming in two tonight on a five-game hit streak, but he's 0 for 2 tonight. A 5-4-3 DP ground out and a fly out to right in his two plate appearances. And during the five-game hit streak, five runs and five RBI scored by Lee. Who last night went three for six with a solo home run over the left field scoreboard. That's in on the fists, and he fouls it back to the screen. Evens the count two and two. Bryce Robinson into his sixth inning of work, his long outing six and two-thirds. It was at Pacific last year when Roby went eight and two-thirds. He almost got the complete game win. They brought in Reed McLaughlin for a one-out save last year. Three balls, two strikes as Roby delivers low and away. BYU 5, Pacific no score. Bryce kicks and fires, and that's a foul tip strike back to the screen on a pitch that would have been, I think, ball four if Lee just takes it. And Bryce has yet to issue a base on balls. Five strikeouts, no walks, no wild pitches, no hit batsman. He's been in control and in command. And that'll be a two-hopper to Ozzie Pratt. Bobbles, picks up with the bare hand, and fires to Jacob Rogers in time for out number one. Ozzie Pratt calmly kept the ball in front of him. Not a clean pickup, but enough time to bare hand and fire. And he's got a hose. And so even on a late throw, Ozzie can make that throw. So one out for Pacific here in the top of the sixth on the 4-3 ground out by Jeremy Lee. He's 0 for 3. His five-game hit streak is in jeopardy. Ball one delivered to James Arakawa, the next hitter. Out of the three-hole, the shortstop Arakawa. Bryce working quickly. Kicks and fires. And on the off-speed offering, gets Arakawa out in front, swinging and missing for strike one. One and one to Arakawa. He has two ground outs tonight, 3-1 and 6-3. And Bryce again working very briskly. And that'll be a base hit dropped into left center. Two hopper to Dawson Hall. He'll lob in and keep Arakawa to a single base, but a one-out single to left center for Arakawa, his first hit of the night. And he's now two for seven in the series. So a man aboard with one gone for Thomas Gavello. Gavello, a double and a strikeout. One for two tonight. Two for four in the series with two runs and four bases on balls. As he was walked four times last night, one time intentionally on a three-ball count, they put him aboard. He walked in the third, the fourth, the sixth, and the eleventh innings last night. One ball, no strikes. One out, one on. We're top six. BYU's up 5 nothing. Foul tip strike off home plate. Count even at one and one to Gavello. Gavello leads the Tigers in homers, RBI, total bases, bases on balls, and strikeouts. Has a double and a strikeout tonight. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Roby from the stretch. Breaking ball stays high for ball two. BYU with a win, wins the series. Put itself in position for a sweep tomorrow. One o'clock first pitch, 106 to be precise. The 2-1 from Roby to Gavello. Time is called. Cavello will step out. Second baseman Gavello, left-handed hitting against the righty Roby. Bryce Robison from the stretch. Comes set and comes plateward. And a turning on that, fouling it on the ground to the Pacific dugout area was Gavello. Puts the count to two and two. Chaz Myers on deck. Myers with a sacrifice bunt and a 6-3 ground out tonight. 2-2. Two, two. One out and a man aboard. Here at the top of the sixth. Cougs up 5-0. Five, five runs on 10 hits for BYU. No runs on six hits for the Tigers. Neither team with a fielding error tonight. The 2-2. Two, two. In on the fists. Ooh, and striped into the dugout. Did it clip somebody on the rail there? I see smiles. So whoever got clipped had to be uh, in a position to 
save himself. That was ripped into the dugout, and everyone's okay down there. Wow. Two balls, two strikes. Count stays even to Gavello. A sliver of sunshine shines upon Bryce Robinson, who comes high for ball three. I'd make a nice photo the way that Roby is right now. The entire infield in shadow and a little sliver of sunshine, a little opening, puts the torso of Roby in sunlight. Full count and a throw over to Jacob Rogers, who swipes down on Arakawa, who's back safe. Full count with one out and one on here in the top of the sixth. Cougs up 5-0. Roby deals. And that will be golfed into center field. Digging hard around second is Arakawa. He will get to third on a head first slide. The throw coming in. Runners on the corners on a single by Govello. So Arakawa goes first to third. And it'll be first and third with one out for Chaz Myers. Back to back one out singles as the Cougar bullpen pitchers continue to warm. Cy Nielsen and Boston maybe is a couple of southpaws. So the guy's up and Cy is looking the more ready of the two right now as Michael Bradshaw. Pitching coach will come out to converse with Bryce Robison, joined by Colin Reuter. Looks like Cy will get the call. When that, if and when that call comes. Cy Nielsen and Reed McLaughlin, the busiest pitchers on the BYU staff, each with 24 appearances on the year. The mound conversation about to be broken up by home plate umpire Scott Jones. On the top of the sixth, Bryce Robinson has given up his fifth, or rather his sixth and seventh hits of the game here in the sixth inning. Still yet to issue a base on balls, or be wild, or hit a batter. Roby off the hill. Chatting with Brock Watkins at second. There are runners on first and third. Arakawa with a one-out single goes first to third on the single by Gavello. So back-to-back -back hits, bringing Chaz Myers into the box on an 0-for-1 night officially with the sacrifice bunt part of his night in the second. The wind-up and deal, low and away. Ball one from Roby. Boston maybe is putting his hoodie back on, so Cy will be the guy when the Cougs go to the pin. One ball, no strikes. One out, two on. Tigers playing catch-up down five zip. Robison from the stretch comes set and delivers. That's popped up into foul territory down the first baseline. Jacob Rogers makes the catch. Thinking about tagging was Arakawa, but a good turn by Rogers. And it'll keep Arakawa where he is at third. And that's a second out and takes the sacrifice fly out of play. So Chaz Myers popping up to Jacob Rogers in foul territory down the first baseline. Two gone and two on. Through the top of the sixth, Brandon Motherall will now hit. And down in the Cougar pen, the southpaw sign Nielsen continues to get warm. Arakawa on third, Gavello on first, Motherall in the box on an 0-for-2 night and a 2-for-7 series is Motherall. Pitch outside for ball one from Roby. Motherall, the batting average leader. His last 20 starts, all as a DH. He's the DH tonight out of the six hole as he was last night when he had three RBI in an 8-7 loss. That's driven to center field. Dawson Hall back to the track and sees it go off the wall. One run scores. A second comes in as Motherall has himself a stand-up double, a two-run double. And the Tigers make it a game here in the top of the six. 5-2 now the score. As that was driven to center field by Motherall. And all Dawson Hall could do was watch it bounce off the padding. Just left of the 402 sign. That wasn't too far away from being a three-run home run. So Motherall with his first hit of the night. It's a stand-up double. And a two-run double, making it a 5-2 ball game. Jacob Weiss will now hit 
On a no for two night, two swinging strikeouts for Weiss, the first baseman. And so Bryce Robinson's night may be drawing to a close here sooner than later. Cook's looking to get out of this inning with no more damage done. One ball, no strikes, two out, and Motherall on second base. Those insurance runs for BYU in the fifth coming in pretty handy right now. Breaking ball settles, but too high for ball two. So the curve above the frame, creating a 2-0 count with two out and one on. The one on is Motherall. Lacing the ball to center moments ago for a two-RBI double. Arakawa and Gavello scoring on the play. Go to ball three, three and zero. Oh. Haven't seen too many three and zero oh counts from Bryce Robinson tonight. Maybe the first one. Hasn't walked a batter yet. The three zero, oh, a take and a called strike for three one. Arakawa and Gavello scoring on the double by Motherall. Making it a 5-2 game, top six. All the runs scored tonight coming in crooked number innings for both teams. Sai Nielsen looks ready to go in the BYU pen, the 3-1. That's fouled out of play. The count will fill at three balls and two strikes, two out. And one aboard for the Tigers. Jacob Weiss is the batter, striking out swinging in the second and the fifth innings. And again, he was a guy coming into this series on a four-game streak with home runs. The 3-2. Fouled back to the padding behind home plate. Count stays 3-2. and two. In his last five games, Weiss, four runs and nine RBI, including an RBI in his one for six outing last night. Here, 3-2. Roby from the stretch, glancing back at second, kicks and fires. And that is striped into the left field corner off the warning track. Motherall comes around to score. It will be back-to-back -back doubles, back-to-back stand-up doubles, another RBI double, and it's a 5-3 ball game now. And that should do it for Bryce Robinson, one would think. So Jacob Weiss following Motherall with a second consecutive double. It's another RBI double. And a third run scores, and that will be it for Bryce Robinson. Trent Pratt out to take the ball. It'll be a PZ Printing pitching change. It's brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. Bryce Robinson went through five and two-thirds. He will give way to the southpaw. Cy Nielsen will set up Cy in 60 seconds on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. It's PZ Printing Pitching Change for BYU, the now busiest pitcher on the BYU staff. Cy Nielsen making his team-leading 25th appearance. Cy coming in out of the pen. Cy with a 3.29 ERA, a 3-0 record on the year. 27 and a third innings pitched in 24 previous appearances. Has given up less than a hit per inning at 22 in 27 and a third. 17 runs allowed, just 10 of them earned. And an almost 6-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio at 35 Ks to 6 free passes. Opponents are batting 216 against Cy, who pitched an inning and a third just last night. And did not give up a hit. Struck out two and walked one. So Ty getting into the game for the second time in as many nights. And he comes into a game. BYU leads, but a 5-0 leads down to 5-3. Here in the sixth, after an inning opening ground out from Jeremy Lee, who's back-to-back -back singles from Arakawa and Gavello, a pop-up by Myers, followed by back-to-back -back doubles from Motherall and Weiss, both of which drive in runs. Motherall's two-bagger brought in two. Weiss's double brought in Motherall. And now we have a 5-3 ball game with two out in the top of the sixth inning. And Nielsen will face Jaron Silva with Weiss on second. And Cy delivers away for ball one. So first pitcher out of the pen tonight is the southpaw, Cy Nielsen, of Spanish Fork High School. 
The six foot three, 210 pound sophomore at the 1 0. And a swing and a miss from Silva. Evens the count at one. Three pitch mix from Sai. Fastball topping in the mid 90s. Goes to his slider or his cider. And then a change. Change in the high 70s. Slider mid 80s. The 1 1 from Nielsen to Silva. Ruder setting up outside. And the target hit. And a paint job for strike two. So 91 miles per hour on the fastball from Sai. Outside edge for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Can the Cougars get out of this inning with only three or no more than three runs across? Three have scored to make it a 5 3 ball game. We're top six. Silva with Weiss on second. Sai glances that way once and twice, kicks and fires. And a reach out foul ball down the third base line, backhanded by the third base coach, Garrett DeGallier. That was a no look barehanded grab, too. And DeGallier hears it in complimentary fashion from the BYU players on the rail in the dugout, the 1 2. Left handed bat of Jaron Silva on a 1 for 2 night. Strikeout and a single. And another reach out swing. Gets a barrel to it, to the screen. The foul ball keeping the count one and two. Pace of this game slowing somewhat. This game one hour and 45 minutes old. We're almost two-thirds of the way done. Last night's game was four hours and 33 minutes. Ended in the 12th inning. The one-two from Nielsen to Silva. Runner on second. Tying run at the plate. Who in the one two? Just missing for ball two. Missing low and away. Tried to catch that tantalizing corner and just missing it for an even count. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And Jacob Weiss on second. Silva is the tying run at the plate. 5 3 ball game. Cougs up 5 3, top six. Nielsen kicks and fires, and that. It's a slider away. Fills the count of three and two. And the one thing BYU has not done tonight is issue a base on balls. Very few three ball counts tonight. Three balls, two strikes, two out. And the runner in scoring position is Weiss for Silva. Hitting out of the eight hole. Sigh from the stretch. Comes set. And gets a backward K to end the inning. Pipes in the... Strike three on a full count, and BYU's out of the sixth inning. So Jaron Silva keeps the barrel on the shoulder, and the caught looking ends the sixth for Pacific. We go bottom six in a two-run ball game. BYU five, Tigers three on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Final and sixth, and Ozzie Pratt will lead things off for BYU. Ozzie led off the fifth inning with a solo home run to right field. A pull shot from Pratt. Starting off a three-run fifth for BYU. And he'll golf that into left center. It is a diving catch made by Ben Nemovant to rob Ozzie Pratt of a hit to left on that looping, dipping shot that Nemevant gets a break on and then leaps out to snag. It's one gone here in the bottom of the sixth. What a grab by Nemevant. We've seen him make a couple of really nice plays. One on a chase down of a fly ball on the warning track and left. And that, a full extension, forward leaping catch made of the dipper by Pratt into left field. One gone for BYU in the bottom of the sixth. Nemevant is an excellent fielder. He made an error last night. He booted a ball off a single that actually let Pratt get to second in the ninth who came in to score on the Sapiti double. I think Pratt might have scored even if he'd stayed at first, but Nemevant making amends for that miscue last night with a couple of really nice plays. Brock Watkins goes to the power alley and left, and the field is going to watch it fly over the wall and bouncing onto the road near the steps of the Marriott Center. A blast from Brock. 
makes it a 6-3 ball game. Brock Watkins a no-doubter to the power alley and left, and with that he takes the solo team lead with his seventh home run of the season, and the Cougs increase their lead to three. Brock got a hold of that, and all the fielders could do is watch it fly as it leaves the park and then bounces to the road between here and the Marriott Center. 6-3 Cougs in the bottom of the sixth. The Cougs' 11th hit is a solo home run for Brock Watkins. So for BYU, solo shots in the fifth and the sixth as the leads increase to 6-3. So after Nemovat makes the nice diving grab of the Ozzie Pratt fly, it's a big fly for Brock. And again, home run number seven on the year for BYU's total bases leader, Cole Gamble. Sees the count evened up after a 1-0 start to the count from Caden Duke. It's taken strike for one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. And no one on for Gamble. Ball two on the take. So Brock Watkins, the Cougars hits and runs and home runs and total bases leader has the home run lead to himself now. He was tied for the lead with six and now he's solo lead at seven as Cole takes ball three, three and one. BYU led 5-0. Tigers made it 5-3 with three in the sixth. And at the bottom of the same frame, Cougs have already scored one to make it a 6-3 ball game. Gamble fouls it out of play. Count will go full at three balls and two strikes. So the Cougars two home runs tonight. Pratt and Watkins home runs out of the one and two spots in the order. The full count to Gamble. And he will take his base in around the belt buckle. That pitch came on the 3-2. And so base on balls for Cole. And Ryan Sapiti will now hit. Sapiti with an RBI in the first. Giving him 39 on the year. He's the team leader in that category. He scored in the first and scored in the fifth after taking a base on balls. And now we'll see a mound visit as the Pacific pen remains busy. Pitching coach conversation with Duke. Duke and the infield. All gather and are a part of this pitching coach conversation. Pitching coach has asked for the ball. He's got it in his hands, so we'll be having a pitching change. We'll do that in 60 seconds. It's a 6-3 ball game. We're bottom six. Cougs lead the Tigers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. New pitcher for the Pacific Tigers, number three, Jackson Vaughn. Jackson Vaughn pitching against BYU for the second consecutive night. Pitched one inning in the Cougs' 12-inning victory last night. Base on balls and two strikeouts in Vaughn's one inning of work. Vaughn on the year, a 3.07 ERA, the lowest ERA of all pitchers on the staff. A 3-1 record, making his 25th appearance, and all 25 appearances have come out of the pen. BYU Baseball brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA is a proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. BYU on the strength of two Zions Bank home runs in the fifth and the sixth innings. Have a 6-3 lead. Zions Bank for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. Zions Bank sponsoring the BYU home runs. Ozzie Pratt has one and so too Brock Watkins. Ryan Sapiti hits with Cole Gamble on first here in the bottom of the sixth. Already one run across on the Watkins home run. And a bit of a delay here before Vaughn can make his first pitch. As he and the second base umpire are engaged in conversation. Vaughn, 5'8", 180, the senior from Bakersfield. One out, one on for the Cougs. One run across here in the bottom of the sixth. Cougs up 6'3". And Sapiti takes a strike one. Sapiti with a single, an RBI single in the first, a single in the third, and a base on balls and runs scored in the fifth. So Ryan, two for two, with two runs and an RBI. 
No balls on a strike to Sapiti. And Ryan will take a piped in strike two. So Vaughn gets ahead of Sapiti 0 and 2. BYU six runs on 11 hits. The Cougs average nine hits per game. They have 11 here in the sixth inning. The 0 2 to Sapiti. Lifts that in the air to right center. Caught by the right fielder. Basket catch around the belt. So the out to right. And Sapiti is retired for the first time tonight. So Jackson Vaughn retires the first batter he faces. Mentioned BYU's 11 hits. The Tigers have now allowed double digit hits in six consecutive games. BYU averaging six runs, nine hits per game, and they have six runs on 11 hits in this game. Two out, and Gamble aboard for Austin Deming. Deming, a two for three night, a single, a double, and a 5 4 3 DP ground out. He'll take strike one, fastball at 87 from Jackson Vaughn. Austin Deming with two hits as his 19th multi-hit game of the year. He and Brock Watkins tied in that category. Both have multiple hits tonight. And that is striped into the power alley in left center. Center fielder lost it off the bat. It'll roll to the wall. Cole Gamble will come around third and score as it's a stand-up double for Austin Deming, his second double of the night, a three-for-four night. It's an RBI double for Dem. The Cougs go up 7-3, to three and off the pat, McLennigan was had no idea where that was, held up his hands immediately, wasn't going to chase it down. It was a good hit anyway. It might have dropped and gotten down in the power alley in left center, but McLennigan lost it. And by the time he found it, it was bouncing and rolling to the wall. And so Austin Deming, a second double on the night. It's an RBI double. And the Cougs increase the lead to four. It's seven to three. And scoring all the way from first is Cole Gamble. Gamble has scored his third run of the night. Josh Cowden stripes it to right and caught at chest level, head height by the right fielder. Silva. So Jaron Silva ends the inning. But for BYU in the bottom of the sixth, it is two runs on two hits. There were no errors, and there was a runner left on. We go to the top of the seventh, BYU 7, Pacific 3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.